Good morning. Hello. I'm going to do something uh, brief. I always say that. I recognise that I always say that. And it really is brief. But you will see. Um, it's usually because there's no plan, no setup. I kind of just think, look, for goodness sake, it's not that hard to do a video. And I know it feels good to stay in touch here and, you know, post regularly. Look at the rocking horse, he's got Maisie's jacket on his head. Right, so um, I thought there's something quite nice about these. I don't know what they are, but I took them from my friend's garden. She said to take the bulbs as well because. Um, you know, I'm just going to do that one because she said they're lovely to, and they spread really well and everything. So I've just found a, a pen, an ordinary biro. I'm going to just um, find the general shape of this. Beautiful flower, I don't know what it's called. Erin's having a pancake in the kitchen. I wish you could smell because it, it is, smells delicious. It's like a miniature version of a lily, really. In case you're wondering, I'm just not talking. You might think that the sound isn't working. I'm just focusing and enjoying finding the the direction of line and the shape and size of the shadows in order to capture something of the structure of this. Quite nice actually to get, get a, a little bit lost and uh, fully immersed in this flower. So there's a cast shadow onto the petal there. The sun is diminishing now a bit, so it's not so clear the shadows, but still, this is darker here than the shadow in front, than the petal in front. But maybe when the sun comes out, that'll be bright. We'll see.
this here is really dark but because I've already done that petal quite dark I'm going to do circular moves to make it a different dark and I'm also going to leave just a little gap where the edge of the petal is before reaching the space behind so that there's an edge to the petal it's the rocking horse behind so it is quite dark here and then suddenly it gets light where the wall is behind now again but I'm just gonna use it as a, a way to define those two petals that dark behind stem could be a little bit lower like there and there's a kind of a detail of dark dark green it's like a, a folding it's enfolding the stem the cylinder of dark green a darker green like it's cylinder like a folding leaf folding around the stem hugging it Kinda nice. It reminds me of um, you know, this close attention to small things. It reminds me of being in Sam Leng at a retreat with um, with Scott and and seeing um, we were just lying on the grass and looking at this tiny little insect, and uh, it was really tiny. It was nice just to see it kind of meandering around the leaves in front of us and the, the grass. And the next thing it just um, did a wee shit. <laughs> it was just uh, right in front of our eyes. It was such a, such a special moment. So there's something of the attention to detail that seemingly insignificant things can have a magic to them. It's quite nice sharing with someone else as well. That moment being shared, you know, seeing a little insect doing a shit. this black thing at the end of these um, tiny little stems that are coming from the centre of the petal this little black thing is kind of helpful to create a bit of structure and a feeling of depth because it's sailing in front of the lighter petal behind and I reckon doing the other ones will help too this one here is quite light but it's got dark ends to it and then this one is fully dark and it extends from in front of the petal to sitting in front of the space, the triangular space between the two petals and it's a touch darker than the background rocking horse leg but I still want to put in the greyer background behind that stem as well just to continue explaining the light on the petal by painting drawing the background up to meet it.
also from doing this other one. I don't know if I've left enough room. Not for all of it anyway, but maybe it's okay to have a cut off at the edge. to relate it in space to the other flower. So the relationship is true to what it feels like to me from where I'm seated. 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 <laughs> I'm not sure if I've managed that. So the other petal should really extend just a little bit further than there. So about there. And it's higher than this one here. And this one here stops past the end of the huggy bed. So maybe there, lower than that. And that means then that actually yeah, this petal here is gonna begin a little bit farther to the left than I had originally thought. And it drops down so that it almost touches the top. So it'll drop down, yeah. It'll drop down to about there. It's a nice long extended petal, that one. Darker at the end. And then bright now that the sun is out. And then dark again where it meets and is overlapped maybe by the shadow. I cast shadows there from maybe something overlapping it. So this is the position of the other petal there, which is brighter again now. And then it's going to go that way for a while. And then there's the other petal that's there. And then the one that will curl up like an arc off the page. And that sits behind or touches some of these beautiful light green leafy stemmy things. So I'll just draw those in and see how they relate to the flower below it. There's another little bud just coming out there. And then there's a little bend. And this is a very vertical, very straight, beautifully dignified kind of quality to this stem that's shooting straight up. Like Dylan Thomas said, the force that through the green fuse drives the flower. <laughs> that force isn't going to happen through some tube that's kind of convoluted. It's a direct force there. That's it force that through the green fuse drives the flower. I love that. created more distance there than there really is. I think I'm okay with that. Yeah, I could always like bring those, just those two, further to the left slightly. If I had my white acrylic pen or something, but actually I think I'm okay with the gap. 
something in my a little bit right here. Let's see. There's a certain tension in them describing things as they are. There's a certain tension of like the quality of them, the space within which things sit in, re in respect to each other in nature seems to have a beautiful tension, like it's just exactly the thing. The It seems like it's the, um, I don't know what the word is really, something like the divine, uh, Leonardo's divine, um, what was it, a triangle or something. Geometry, sacred geometry. It's like things are positioned so perfectly that they're exactly where they need to be. That's the thing with nature. It reminds me of the David Wagner poem, Stand Still, the trees ahead and the bushes beside you are not lost. Where you are is called here and you must treat it as a powerful stranger. Something about the stillness of trees and the stillness of things as they, they, they just are. They just things like flowers and stuff that simply they simply um they simply um <laughs> are where they are like they sit where they are they're fully embodied in their space fully and gloriously positioned and <laughs> it's such a tricky thing isn't it <laughs> to put words to it all you have to do is really look at a flower for a length of time and the curiosity uh, and then there's there's a reward to that curiosity of the beauty of them um, that's kind of intrinsic there just waiting to be found noticed I suppose and there's that thing of a stillness in the alive space it occupies I think there's a maybe a Buddhist meditation where you simply gaze upon a flower. I suppose it's the quality of um, looking. I'm not sure if I could just sit with a flower and achieve that state of stillness, maybe without an expressive response there's something about for me there's something about seeing with the with the the mind being occupied then and moving the hand whereas if it's seeing without that response then maybe that the attention can't be so full maybe that's why creativity is good for us because it keeps our minds off their usual relentless track of thoughts and planning and figuring out and everything and actually instead m our mind is given the is given the task of um, translating vigorously what's seen it would have been nice wouldn't it to have the extension there but we can always um, visualize the energy of the arc of that petal going on and can always visualize it and just um, I'm thinking of Dega and I think it was maybe the impressionists used to when they were influenced by Japanese art they ended up um, in their drawings and paintings things were cut off by the edge of the page so if ever that happens and I I want to have a kind of a ghetto clause, I just say I'm just following in the footsteps of Dega, who, um, you know, he was okay with things being cut off by the edge of the page. In fact, he used it as a way of increasing the, f the dynamic quality of his work. That's, what, that's my take on it anyway.
light is incredible when it comes out, isn't it? It reveals the beautiful brightness of this the sunlight on the petal is incredible. Let's deepen the background tone here to further identify this petal. Now that it's in the sunlight, it's so much brighter than the background. And it's a nice little leg to... I like the shooting offness of it. Let's darken that down a bit more there. And then... Here too. plans to go to school today. I've got um, a couple of commissions, three commissions now to do for Christmas and in my um, enthusiasm I kind of have this idea that I'm going to get them all done in one in the next few days but you will see. I'm do using the Atomic Habits kind of idea of um, just doing whatever, whatever it is that needs to be done, just doing two minutes of it. So if I can kind of fool my mind into doing two minutes or something, often I'm off then. A bit like these videos. If I just say, you know, I'm just going to do a couple of minutes now just to do something. And then um, once I get going, then the momentum develops and it's like, no bother. So I think the commissions will be the same. It's kind of sometimes, you know, the overwhelming feeling sometimes when there's a lot of irons in the fire, because for me, the other aspect of my work is um, the online courses, which are fantastic, and I love doing them. They, I need to put them in place, and, and I already have done that now. I know there's payments coming in, but I need to recognize them, messages to send to people about them. So there's the online courses. And then the third thing is, what's the third thing? Oh, the Facebook sale. I had a Facebook sale on my paintings last week, and now we need to send them out. I'd love people to have them for Christmas. So my friend Jem and his wife, they're putting all the paintings together into into their postage. They're getting, get, they're getting really good packaging this time. And I've got some cards I want to write to people who bought paintings. And then we're going to send them all off once they're packaged, ready to go from the 8th of December as a plan. So hopefully folk will get them for Christmas. Let's see. So those are the three main things. And then there's things like I'm buying a bed for Ada, I'm buying a desk for Lily. Stuff like that is gonna get done well. Here's Erin. Oh Erin, are you um going to school today? What time? Eleven. What time? You're going at lunch time. Beautiful sunny day, am I? We have tempted to go for a swim today. I went and had a bonfire last night at Glad House. With it being a full moon, it was lovely. Well, I could hardly see the moon actually, to be honest. But we had hot chocolate and marshmallows and fire. Erin was working, so she wasn't there. She works every Saturday and Sunday, so I don't see any breeze. And then she's got a, fair, a limited timetable this year with 60 or so. She's not, she's not in for every lesson. And the other, actually, there's other things too. The, the tax return is you done. I've just, uh, I've just got in touch with a cleaner because I thought if I can declutter the house in the next week or so, and we have a certain enthusiasm for that, I thought it'd be fantastic then to have someone come in and do a deep clean and just and um, make it nice and just to clear up 
to create space first. So be emptying cupboards, I think, this week. You see, it's all a bit much, isn't it? Like the three commissions happening in the same week as I'm decluttering. That sounds a bit of a setup to me. Maybe I could enlist someone to declutter as well. I had a friend who set up a business doing that, you know, and she did help me about three years ago. She did an amazing job at the attic in the old house, sorted it all out, even bought and set up the furniture to store everything. Just, you know what, now that's sounding appealing to me. Because I think the, the thing is, by the time I get round to it myself, I'll be, I'd say I'll have had a few all nighters or something. So, you know, if I'm doing that as well as the commissions. I have three portrait commissions are the main thing, but there's also other paintings that I want to do. And of course I'll be tuning in here fairly often, hopefully. if my friend is still doing that business you can you can tell that I've piqued my own interest now talking about all the things I want to do and I want to avoid overwhelm because you see overwhelm is no good for anyone and nothing that gets done has any quality to it really I know that sounds a bit harsh but from a place of overwhelm things are only um, they're only done for the sake of us there's no love in it Sure, we might as well. We might as well um, enjoy all of it, all of it, rather than feel drudge in any of it. So so much as we can. I know. I mean, it's always going to be mundane stuff to do, but I think actually I'm going to do what I can to make those mundane things, even those mundane things, um, maybe especially those mundane things like dishes and all that. I'm going to do what I can to make those things meaningful and to be mindful when I'm doing them. I just did a meditation this morning and the guy was talking about mindfulness, bringing that into everything. And for, like, you, you might do your, misa, your meditation in the morning and even if you're sitting for an hour and all zen and everything, and then you come out of it and you snap at your spouse or whatever it is, it is not, what's the point in that? So it's the so the idea was to try and bring that attitude of mindfulness to everything. That's all. <laughs> but I guess if it's an intention, that's something, isn't it? Right. There we are. I think I might stop with that. You can't probably see what I was actually drawing, can you? There's a... It's this one here. <laughs> but I made better. Um, okay. So there we are. That's it. Bring me a bit closer so you can have a look at what my, my viewpoint was, kind of. And there's Maisie. Hey, Maisie. Hello. And midnight at the window, wanting to get in. Maisie wanting a walk. Okay, and here's me, still in my pajamas bottom half and I